Each Matrix film brought a unique and surprising revelation. The Matrix told the story of how humanity lived trapped inside a virtual world created by machines and how a savior would arrive to save them. In Matrix Reloaded, it was revealed that the prophecy of the savior was a fabrication, a farce, and Matrix Revolutions concluded the tale unexpectedly with humans and machines agreeing to a truce. It's easy to see why many are excited for this long-awaited continuation of this transcendental story. And so today, we are going to be discussing five theories about where this story could be going in Matrix 4. Welcome to Matrix Explained. These theories and ideas are not presented in any particular order, but they are among the most interesting ones we could find. Number 1. It's all about the programs. Through the original Matrix trilogy, there was a subplot unfolding, one that has not been discussed much or at all. A subplot that is likely to return and evolve in Matrix 4. The idea that the machines are repeating the same mistakes that their creators made. Despite the machines wanting to perceive themselves as creators of a perfect world, in reality, that was far from the truth. The machines constantly have to deal with dissent from the programs they created, created for the purpose to make the machines work easier. We've met several of these programs. The Merovingian, his wife Persephone, the Exiles, Seraph, even programs that have escaped the machine city to hide inside the Matrix, like Sati, and of course everyone's favorite evil program, Smith. The interesting thing about these programs is that most share the same desire that the machines had when they separated from the humans. The desire to survive or to not be deleted in the case of the programs. Because when a program is no longer needed or is outdated, the machines erase it. Usually a program chooses exile when it faces deletion. And why would a program be deleted? Maybe it breaks down. Maybe a better program is created to replace it. Happens all the time. And when it does, a program can either choose to hide here or return to the source. Sounds familiar to the case of B166ER, doesn't it? The first robot to disobey its master and sparked a machine rebellion that eventually led to war. The rebellion within the Matrix could eventually happen sparked by the programs that are tired of being used and oppressed by the machines. Just as humans created machines with artificial intelligence to make their lives easier, machines created programs for the same purpose, with artificial intelligence as well. Just like what happened to the machines, the program's AI may have evolved, enough so that they started to create new programs among themselves, the result of strong bonds such as love between them, like Rama's family. With the Oracle's unique intuition to predict future events, she may have seen this growing conflict between the machines and the programs as inevitable, just like with Smith. However, Smith was only one program that nearly destroyed the Matrix. So imagine what would happen if all the Matrix programs rebel as Smith did. Not even all the anomalies together would be able to stop them. In regards to Sati, the Oracle mentions that she is important to the future of both machines and humans. Clip Enter the Matrix. This is why she allowed the Merovingian to destroy her outer shell. She wanted Sati to enter the Matrix so she could watch over her. Can you tell me what happened to you? Two programs that I trusted sold the termination code of my original shell to the Merovingian. Why did they do that? For love. For the life of their child. You knew about it, and yet you let it happen. I had to. Why? Because the child is important. I can't tell you why, but I believe that one day, the child will change both our world and your world forever. The Oracle sees Sati as the next step in the evolution of machines and humans, and therefore, she is the key to the future of the Matrix. We are confident that actress Priyanka Chopra will play an adult Sati, and her role will be important for the future of the story. Number 2. Morpheus is going to be a villain. The production of Matrix 4 has been characterized by the absence of Lawrence Fishburne. 
This could be a calculated move to surprise the audience with Morpheus' return. However, this time, as an antagonist, what leads us to have this radical idea? Well, first, is that even though Morpheus fought for the liberation of humanity and was Neo's mentor, he was kind of a religious zealot, with his only goal being to fulfill the prophecy of the One. He was willing to sacrifice anything to accomplish that goal. He sacrificed his relationship with Niobe and risked his position in the Zion army. In a scene cut from the original movie script, Morpheus had already found several subjects that he thought were the One, all of whom eventually died all because he was following a false prophecy imposed by the Oracle. In other words, he was a tool of the machines. In The Matrix Online, Morpheus demanded the machines to deliver Neo's body to him. By the machines not doing so, Morpheus went on a rampage in the simulation, destroying sectors of the code with bombs to expose the Matrix to the humans. But we know what happens to a person if they are abruptly awakened to the truth. They can die from shock. Morpheus would eventually be taken out by a hitman sent by the Merovingian, but this does not mean that he can't return. After all, Neo and Trinity are returning. There is also the fact that Morpheus is the captain of the Nebuchadnezzar, the name of the king of Babylon and the enemy king of Zion in the biblical texts. So something might happen in the plot of Matrix 4 that Morpheus doesn't agree with. And just like before, Morpheus is going to do what he believes is necessary to achieve his goals, even if that means standing against Neo. Number 3. There is a new group of humans. So far as we know, the only humans that exist in the real world are the people of Zion, but that might not be the case. After all, the history and information about the past and the war that is recorded in the Zion archives were placed there by the machines. There is a theory that there may be other human groups besides Zion who may have made a pact with the machines to survive. Perhaps they are descendants of the machine's sympathizers of the time before the machine war. There is also the other theory that there is a group of humans who live in a celestial city above the black clouds. This city was built as a refuge for humans before the covering of the sky. The only logical reason for the humans to carry out such an act. But if the machines can fly, why don't they destroy this flying city? Well, that's because the fog that the humans use to cover the sky is hazardous to the machines. The movie script describes that the black clouds carry an electrical discharge that incapacitates the machines. This is shown near the end of Matrix Revolutions when Neo and Trinity are being pursued by Sentinels. So yes, the humans did scorch the sky, but probably not for the reasons believed in the story. Number 4. Only Neo is alive in Matrix 4. But how? We've seen Trinity and Neo together on the set of the movie. Yes, that is true. However, those images are only from within the simulation. We know that there are constructs of Trinity that even the Resistance use for training purposes. As illustrated in the Matrix comic, I can't. So Neo might have been reconnected to the simulation by the machines via a pod based on these photographs of a clean shave to Keanu Reeves. If the machines need Neo's help once again, then they can reuse the predication that the anomaly primarily functions on. His love for Trinity. She can help Neo get him out of the simulation and into a new human ship, the Namazani, which in Greek mythology is the goddess of memories. So Trinity might be used to remind Neo of who he was. The Trinity from the movies didn't meet her ultimate end in Matrix Online. So either the game is decanonized, or the machines were forced to create a program resembling her. And number 5. Jessica Henwick is the new integral anomaly. If there is one thing that is certainly going to happen in Matrix 4, is that a new anomaly will arise. The Matrix is not yet 100% effective, nor are all the humans free from it. Therefore, as we have explained in a previous video, a new anomaly is bound to emerge. Out of all the possible candidates, the one new addition to the Matrix who makes the most sense to us is Jessica Henwick. The actress is trained in martial arts, which makes her an ideal fit for the role of the One. Plus, she is young and looks the part. Henwick's character is sure to be a red pill, Neo's counterpart, and maybe apprentice. She might be trained by him in a passing of the torch kind of scenario. It sure would be interesting to see two ones working together. 
the original and the new generation. But do you agree? Which of these theories do you think is the most likely to happen in Matrix 4? For Matrix Explained, please leave a like and subscribe, and thank you for visiting the Desert of the Real.